So, uh, next, uh, in this step, we want to make sure that our waveguide is single mode. So, let's go to the my slide. Uh, for the single mode waveguide, if you look at the literatures and papers, so most people use like 500 nanometer for width and 220 nanometer for, for height. But why they select this value? So for, for this case, we can see that uh, our waveguide, like uh, for the T case, just we have one mode because uh, this mode and this one is not confined through the waveguide. So just we have a one mode which is confined through the waveguide. But how we can do it, how we can make sure that this number is is uh, the best number for, for designing of the height and width of the silicon photonic waveguide. So let's look at this one. So if uh, I run the, the mode solver, I think we have four modes here. If I change the, the height of the waveguide for each mode, and if I plot the effective index versus <coughs> height, we can find that 220 nanometer is a good number that in this number just <clears throat> our waveguide behaves as a single mode waveguide. So like if we put the, the, the height of the waveguide, it's 220 nanometer. So we can see that the effective index is 2.5 for the first waveguide. Uh, for other waveguide, so the refractive index is around is less than two. So in this case, this is a TM mode. And these two other modes are T, which is the, the effective index is around 1.5. It means that these modes are not guided mode. So just we have a single mode in this waveguide with this height. So, <clears throat> For instance, in this picture, you can see that the blue curve, we plot the refract effective index versus height for the first mode as a blue color. For the green one, we have pl we plot the effective index for as a versus height for the second mode, which is TM mode. And the others mode, we plot the effective index versus height for the third and fourth mode. So if we change the, the height to, for instance, 450 nanometers, so in this case, we can see that we have like our, our T modes also, like this mode and this mode is confined through the waveguide. Just, so and it shows that this waveguide does not behave as a single mode waveguide. So as and also you can you can see by this picture. So for in this, for instance in this line 415 nanometer height. So we have TE, we have TM, and also T and TM. So for for this T, if you look at the the effective index is around 2.2. So it means that. Uh, this waveguide supports more than one mode. So it's not single mode. So next, if we change the, the width of the waveguide, so for instance, from 0.3 to 0.8 micrometer and plot the uh, mode for, uh, plot the effective index versus width for different modes, uh, and uh, for instance, if we select the 0.5 micrometer for bits, and if we plot the modes mode 
as you see here in this picture, so just we have one supported mode with uh, widths of 0.5 micrometer. So let's go to the numerical and do this exercise. So if I open the, the numerical, if I define a sweep, like if I click here as a sweep, you see, create new parameter sweep and double click on it and I select height change, height of waveguide. So, and if I right click on the height of waveguide and then select edit. So just <clears throat> 10 number is okay for this case. If I select add, then go the parameters. I want to change the height of the waveguide. So the height of the waveguide is, is Y span in this picture. So waveguide, Y span, it's length. So if I change from 0.1 to 0.5, and then I rename it to the height of the waveguide. And then in the result part, if I click on the add and select the object, FD object, data object, and select, for instance, for the mode, mode one mode one and I want to plot the an effective of mode one and I rename it to N N F plus F N F one M one mode one. So then I click OK and run the simulation. So you see here, we have 10. So we submit in the job manager, 10 simulations. So it takes a little time to, uh, to finish, finish the simulation. So uh, let's pause the, the video. How's the so we are waiting to to finish the simulation yeah so if I select the height width height of the waveguide and then if I right click on on this part and select visual and effective we see that the, the N effective versus height. So if I select the height based on micrometer, the unit, if I change the unit of height to micro, you can see that it, it behaves like this, like this. And uh, so we can, we can plot the green and other colors. So, for instance, if we want to plot the, the other case, I can select again, edit, then I can select add, and the add. So, I can select mode 2, again, effective index, we can rename to an F. Active two and then for the mod three, we can do the same procedure. Effective, effective three for mod four. 
can select the mode four and effective and effective four. And then I can click OK and rerun the simulation. So in that case, we need to wait again. <clears throat> so I pause the video. So the, the simulation is, is finished. <clears throat> so if I right click on the, on the height of the waveguide, and so if you plot the, so we have also another option here, add to visualize one. So if you remember last time, we plot the <clears throat> NF active versus Lambda here. So we want to add other curves in this picture. We don't want to create a new picture. So in that case, we can click right on the height of the waveguide and then add to visualize one and effective two. So you see in this picture and then add to an effective three and then we can find the an effective four. So yeah, as I described in this slide, for this point two two, yeah. Is compatible with the single mode waveguide. So, and by this way, you can uh, you can extract this plot. For the for the other case, so in this curve, we change the effective index versus height, and if we want to change the effective index versus width again. We plot the, we create a new sweep, parameter sweep, and we can rename it to width of the waveguide, and then click right and select edit, then select the width. Width of the waveguide is uh, is excess excess span. So excess span lengths, for instance, from 0 0.3 to 0 0.9. And uh, the results, we want to plot the, like, effective index of Hot one and effective one, and then again the same procedure. Mod two and effective two. Mod three. and effective three. And for <coughs> mode four, and effective four. So then if I run the simulation, So we are waiting to finish the simulation. So we are, so the simulation is almost is finishing, almost is finishing. So yes, that's it. Then again, right click on with waveguide, select the visual and effective. The same procedure, we select the micro for this case, and then right click, add to visualize an effective two, 
an effective tree and an effective four. Yeah. So you, you see that for the 500 nanometer, so mostly, for instance, so, so most of the effective index of the modes are less than the two, around 1.8 for instance. This one is around 1.8. So it's, it's near the, the CLAD, the refractive index of CLAD. So just we have one, one mode. So the 500 nanometer is a good choice for the bits. Yeah. <sighs>